people, I am back and I wanted to talk to you about, let's talk about it, like no, <laughs> um, I'm actually talking to you guys about something that I'm really, really excited about, so first let me give a praise report because your girl has managed to work out for a month straight without any flare ups or crisis. Can we get a round of applause, please? Thank you. All right, so I know for the mo for the average person that doesn't matter, or you're like, girl, like, what is the big to do? Like, what to do? Well, it actually, is a big deal because um, in the past, as I have tried to work out and exercise regularly with MD, I've always been shut down after a few days. So I would go really, really hard in the paint for a few days, and then my body's like, girl, nope, we're not ready. You tried it, sit down. You know, so uh, just background in case you guys aren't aware. Um, I was diagnosed with MD and one of the first things that my doctor said was cancel that gym membership, sis, because it ain't happening. So I was devastated, not because like I was training for some type of fitness competition or anything like that, but I was very, very active in the gym, number one. The second aspect of that is one of the medications that I was prescribed to combat my MD was prednisone. And if you know anything about prednisone, prednisone will turn you into sand, will turn you from sandy cheeks to Mrs. Puff real quick, okay? So your girl is puffy. Now, I'm blessed and I'm kind of tall, so it's been distributed rather nicely if I say so myself. However, I feel as though I could shred a couple and just get back to a physique that I'm more comfortable with, so that's what I'm working towards. So here I am after 28 days of working out and I just really wanted to share that with you all because I know that there could be other people who have kind of struggled with figuring out what's going to help them maintain an exercise regimen, regimen while having MD. So y'all ready for these tips? Alright. I had to write them down because you know another symptom of MD is brain fog and uh, your girl be forgetting. So let me see. Alright. My first tip for working out is work out in the dark. Now, not pitch black darkness, okay? So I have pretty much resolved to working out at home. So what I will do is I have just opened my blinds a little bit and let some natural sunlight in or maybe a light from another room. But the room that I'm actually working out in, I like to keep dark and maybe have like a couple candles lit for, you know, some aromatherapy, some ambiance, you know, some focus, like warm myself into this workout, maybe the TV light, something, not a strong overhead light that's going to cause more heat. Because as we know, heat is a no-no. At least for me, heat is a no-no. Okay, moving on to tip number two, which is I work out with a fan. So I have a fan. It's a standing floor fan. Standing floor fan, um, and I have it maybe five to ten feet in front of me on high at all times during my workout because, again, I want to keep it cool. I want to make sure that I'm not overheating myself because heat is definitely my arch nemesis. I mean, it just is what it is. Going along with that, I, which is tip number three, I keep cool water with me while I work out. So in a previous video, I talked about my addiction to water and how much I love it so much. But I'm not sure if I mentioned that I drink room temperature water. I really don't like cool water that much. It doesn't sit as well with my system, but room temperature is my girl. However, when I am working out, I will uh, have cool water with me just because if I do get overheated, having that cool water cool me from the inside out, that's a quick remedy. That's a quick help. So that's my third tip. Definitely, definitely, definitely keep you some water. All right. So those things are all to assist in not being overheated, which could then lead to the muscle weakness. Right? Okay. So beyond that, one of the things that I found helpful was to change the time of day that I work out. So one of my previous failure attempts, I was waking up at about 3.30 in the morning. That's right, 
3.30 in the morning to work out before I go to work because I go to work, I go to I have to be at work by 5.30. So I was waking up at 3.30, so that's it, work out, shower, get dressed, make it to work on time. Um, and I chose 3.30 in the morning because that's the time of day that I felt I had the most energy. Um, Cause I felt like I was stronger when I first woke up versus later on in the day. And while I was able to get to my workouts, as I moved throughout the day, I believe that I was crashing. By the time I got home, I was very irritable and I was very, very tired. Um, I do not sleep well, possibly because of the prednisone. So, um, not getting good sleep during the night is breaking my sleep with an alarm to wake up at 3.30 to exercise. Like It was just a vicious, vicious cycle and I was just very, very sleep deprived, very tired and that it, I assume led to me going into crisis or flare ups within like a week or two of doing that type of early morning rising. So this time when I decided to exercise, I changed the time of day to right when I get home from work. So about 4 p.m. Um, and while I don't feel as though I am stronger in terms of that's my best time of day, I have been able to maintain it and I think one of the reasons I am able to maintain it is because I'm eating a few hours beforehand because I'll eat lunch um, and then that gives me fuel for my workouts. So changing the time of day has really, really helped me. And I know you might be saying, but you say work out in the dark. So like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I still work out in the dark. That's why I just use natural sunlight. I'm not sure how some of these tips will work for those of you who like to work out in an actual gym facility versus working out at home. But this is what I do when I'm at home and I have a lot more flexibility. If you want to work out in the gym, if you get there early enough in the day, because I used to go to Gold at like 3.30 in the morning and there would be no one there and I could go into some of their rooms and dim the lights a little bit or turn the fans on high, do certain things that would make it conducive for me. So I would take those things into consideration. Um, if you're an avid gym, avid gym visitor, maybe you want to schedule your workouts, not only taking into consideration when you're the strongest, but taking into consideration the crowds because the more people that are in the gym, the hotter it's going to be. The less people, the cooler. And those are different things that you can definitely keep in mind, okay? The next tip I have is proper shoe wear. Okay, so I had a pair of trainers, Nike trainers that I really, really loved. And if you know anything about like working out or just training, most people do use training shoes. The soles are a bit different and that helps with like form and different things of that nature. However, I had to ditch my trainers because they weren't, I wasn't, it didn't feel right. Like I was hurting when I was doing certain moves in those shoes. So I had to get a shoe with a different cushion and a different level of support. And that has definitely helped me uh, maintain working out without causing damage or hurting myself or my joints or my muscles and the different impacts that it's having. Okay. My next tip that I have is I alternate between high and low impact exercise days. What I mean by that is on Monday, I might do cardio, and then Tuesday, I'll do yoga and stretch. And then Wednesday, I might do strength training, so using weights and squats and push-ups and different things of nature. And then Thursday, I'll go back to some more yoga and stretching. And that alternate schedule, I believe, is really, really helpful. I think that it has had a lot to do with my longevity this go around because before I wanted those results quick and I wanted them fast so all I was doing was fast high impact cardio let's go let's go every single day and my body was like sis we can't and so by the end of the first week it was just a no-go like my body was like girl you tried it but we got something for you so I would definitely recommend doing an alternative alternative exercise regimen in which you are giving your body those rest days in between and uh, not putting so much strain and stress on it okay like if you don't listen to anything else in the video i would definitely take that as the number one tip uh, maybe three because number one should be stay cool and drink water 
but all these tips are necessary so write them all down adhere to them my next tip that I have is do not be ashamed to take breaks as needed um, this is not a race it's not a sprint it's not a marathon you do what you feel is best for you and your body you might have planned well let me start over another tip or to go along with that is adjust your expectations of what it's going to be and what I mean by that is on Monday you might have been able to do 10 push-ups but on Wednesday you can only do two that's the nature of MD you never know how much strength you have how many spoons you have so don't beat yourself up when you can't outdo yourself the previous day the important thing is that you showed up and you gave it your best don't push yourself too much push yourself to do something but don't push too much you really need to know yourself and know your body and know when enough is enough respect your body and it will respect you so if you say oh I'm gonna go for a walk for 30 minutes and seven minutes in you need to take a break don't be ashamed about taking a break Maybe today you can only do 10 minutes. Maybe today you can only do 15 minutes. But the point is that you're doing it and you have to be kind and respect yourself. So those are my tips. Um, if y'all want a quick recap, let me go through it. Let me make sure I hit them all. Work out in the dark. Keep a fan nearby. Keep some cool water with you. Wear proper shoes. Um, exercise at the time of day in which you feel as though you have most energy or that works best for your schedule. Alternate high and low impact days. Take breaks as needed and remember that your performance can vary from day to day. So those are my tips. I hope you like them. I hope that you can incorporate them into your uh, workout regimen as you're exercising with MD. And if you have some other tips that has worked for you in your workout regimen, please drop them below because I am trying to be snatched by well, I would have preferred to have some abs by last year, but it's a work in progress. But I love to hear you guys' workout stories, your victories, your trials, your triumphs, and we're going to do this together. All right, see you guys next time.